For my own part, I consider it as nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery. The question before the House is one of awful moment to this country. Should I keep back my opinions at such a time, through fear of giving offense, I should consider myself as guilty of treason toward my country. I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and to provide for it. Is it that insidious smile with which our petition has been lately received? We have done everything that could be done to avert the storm which is now coming on. If we mean not basely to abandon the noble struggle in which we have so long been engaged, we must fight! Patrick Henry was born on May 29, 1736, in Hanover County, Virginia. Young Patrick Henry was educated at home by his father John Henry. Patrick then went on to study law. We are apt to shut our eyes against a painful truth and listen to the song of that siren till she transforms us into beasts. He became more well known in 1763 when he argued the Parsons cause in Hanover County. He proclaimed a king who would veto a good and necessary law made by a locally elected representative body was not the father to his people but a tyrant. Suffer not yourselves to be betrayed with a kiss. Ask yourselves how this gracious reception of our petition comports with those warlike preparations which cover our waters and darken our land. In 1765, he was elected to the House of Burgesses. He debated against the Stamp Act. They are meant for us. They can be meant for no other. They are sent over to bind and rivet upon us those chains which the British Ministry have been so long forging. And what have we to oppose to them? Shall we try argument? Sir, we have been trying that for the last ten years. Let us not, I beseech you, sir, deceive ourselves. On March 23, 1775, ten years later, he gave his most famous speech at the Virginia Convention, inside St. John's Church, in Richmond, Virginia. They tell us, sir, that we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable an adversary. But when shall we be stronger? Will it be the next week? Or the next year? Will it be when we are totally disarmed? and when a British guard shall be stationed in every house? Shall we gather strength by irresolution and inaction? Shall we acquire the means of effectual resistance by lying supinely on our backs and hugging the delusive phantom of hope until our enemy shall have us bound hand and foot? Sir, we are not weak if we make a proper use of those means which the God of nature hath placed in our power. The millions of people, armed in the holy cause of liberty, and in such a country as that which we possess, are invincible by any force which our enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we shall not fight our battles alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations, and who will raise up friends to fight our battles for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant, the active, and the brave. Besides, sir, we have no election. If we were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable, and let it come. I repeat it, sir, let it come. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. 
The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death! Patrick Henry gave his entire speech without notes. His words stirred the hearts of his listeners to the core. His speech was pivotal in the convention's decision to mobilize the Virginia militia to defend against the oncoming British takeover. Less than a month later, the British marched on Lexington and Concord. Patrick Henry then helped George Washington obtain the men necessary for the Continental Army. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided and that is the lamp of experience. I know of no way of judging of the future, but by the past. He later went on to serve as a delegate to the Second Continental Congress, and also as Virginia's governor. Patrick Henry was a leader in protests against British tyranny and in the movement for colonial rights. He died June 6, 1799 at Red Hill Plantation, Virginia. His last public words were, Let us trust God and our better judgment to set us right hereafter. United we stand, divided we fall. Let us not split into factions which must destroy that union upon which our existence hangs. Let us preserve our strength, and not exhaust it in civil commotions. When the American spirit was in its youth, the language of America was different, liberty, sir, was then the primary object. And in proportion to the magnitude of the subject ought to be the freedom of the debate. It is only in this way that we can hope to arrive at truth and fulfill the great responsibility which we hold to God and our country. Should I keep back my opinions at such a time, through fear of giving offense, I should consider myself as guilty of treason toward my country.